At least a thousand lives have been saved in the past year by the National Sea Rescue Institute. We speak to Craig Lambinon. Welcome, Craig. Good afternoon. Thank you. Craig, you've had a very busy two last weekends. In fact, you've had a very busy 30 years. Yeah, um, that's, that's correct. Well, uh, NSRI has been around now for over 55 years. So, uh, you know, understandably, it's a, it's a massive effort. Uh, the last two weeks have been incredibly busy for the NSRI volunteers ourselves. But it's also understandable that it's a, a joint cooperation between emergency services, police, water policing and dive services. Uh, yesterday, even the police canine search and rescue um, uh, involved in an operation at Storms River. Um, and then obviously the joint emergency services, of which we are really one spoke in that um, uh, uh, cooperation between the emergency services to respond to emergencies, understand to be NSRI responsible as primary responders to inshore water rescue, and now also together with police divers and fire and rescue services are responding to inland waterways um, uh, for rescue operations and assistance, particularly assistance over the last two weeks with the um, immense weather conditions that have affected our coastline and inland around South Africa. You were involved in major evacuation operations in Stanford and Makassar, for instance. Please tell us about those. I believe not even the parrot was left behind in Stanford. Yeah, that, that is correct. Yeah, so uh, I mean, not only uh, domestic animals, but also um, farm animals have also had to be assisted uh, from flooded waterways in Stanford on the Clane River. We are aware that over the last uh, two days, the police, uh, water policing, and dive services have assisted the Dalswukta um, uh, Haldersgruen a prison uh, to um, uh, uh, supply them uh, with resources and supplies. After they, the prison itself was cut off uh, by these floods, and that's been an extensive operation involving water policing and dive service around the, the, the Western Cape and Southern Cape and the divers from the Boerland. Um, and that was a major operation. In Israel, we're aware of the incident, but we weren't physically um, a request to assist. In Israel, assisted places like um, Straitsby, um, Caledon, Villiersdorp, um, Macassar, where 71 people, including domestic animals, were brought to safety at, in flooding in Macassar. And in Stanford, where at least 50 people were um, brought to safety over um, uh, uh, flooded waterways. I understand that we've got jet skis and we've got jet ribs. The jet ribs is a rescue craft that NSRI volunteers in cooperation with um, a, a designers. They designed this rescue craft, which is really a, a jet ski with a rigid all inflatable boat built around the jet ski. Um, so so that, that's made a massive difference to us because it, instead of a, a jet propulsion, it's got what's called an impeller. So we're able to navigate over areas that have got debris in the water or shallow water without the propeller of an outboard uh, um, a, a boat motor being compromised by debris, flotsam, tree stumps, a wiring that's in the water. It has unfortunately caused some problems for our impellers, but the rescue operations were all made, made possible because of the impeller system on the jet trips and the jet skis that made it possible, but some repairs are now underway uh, because of uh, um, debris being sucked into the, the, into the impeller during rescue operations over the last few days. Can you tell us how many people from your side were involved in rescue operations over the past couple of weeks? Yeah, so literally hundreds of volunteers. So we've got about one and a half thousand volunteers stationed around around the country. That's on coastal rescue stations and inland rescue stations. We've now inland got Sharip Dam, we've got uh, Hardebeer Sport Dam, Val Dam, Witbank Dam, and Gauteng, and also Tiervater's Kloor, uh, that uh, all have NSRI rescue stations. They don't only get assist at the dams themselves, but they assist by rescue service and police with rescue operations around uh, those areas where there are things like flash floods or water-related rescue emergencies that we're now able to assist with uh, volunteers that have got um, uh, wetsuits, they are re um, swift water rescue trained, and they've got obviously good communications uh, devices and rescue craft. 
that can assist police and, and fire rescue services on inland waterways, but that's extended. Like for argument's sake with these uh, floods, we had NSRI coastal rescue stations responding inland to assist the emergency service disaster risk management municipalities with evacuations uh, to bring people affected by the rains uh, to um, a, a safe, safely through waterways to safety. Was this the biggest inland operation that you guys have been involved we, we're in? We're still evaluating that. We, we don't mm. believe so. There have been other cases where there have been a really major, but it's certainly up there amongst the biggest that we've attended to in recent times. And it's pretty, pretty um, clear to see how the storms affected the Western Cape in particular, um, then the, the Southern Cape, and then parts of the Eastern Cape. It caused us, obviously, to have a mass mobilization uh, to assist um, the emergency service disaster risk management and municipalities with evacuations. And the previous weekend, you guys were involved in, in KZN as well. Yeah, that's correct. All the way up to um, uh, Richards Bay, uh, where um, fl- flooded areas um, uh, were, were, because of that storms, that, ma- that strange storm surge that we saw uh, with that uh, massive weather system. The really engulfed the entire South African coast, causing a storm surge, which is something we don't often see. The last time we saw a storm surge was during the tsunami, um, uh, the, the, the um, uh, far east tsunami that affected parts of the of the eastern African coastline, all the way down to Mossel Bay, and in fact a little bit further than Mossel Bay. Um, so a storm surge like that is an unusual thing. We suspect that it's simply a confluence of circumstance with the weather. And it, it also, we've seen from the, the social media posts, quite hectic what was experienced around the coast with car parks and residences and, and buildings, businesses being affected by waves um, on, on the shoreline. Who do you rely on for funding? So our funding for the NSRI is predominantly public funding and corporations that fund the NSRI. So, you know, we, we always say to the, the people who donate money to NSRI or people who fund NSRI through, through um, uh, corporate sponsorships, even though they're not physically with us on rescue operations, we still regard them as being strapped to our back uh, when we launch a rescue operation because without them, we don't have the world-class resources and assets that we have to respond to these these emergencies. So you've seen we've got um, a state-of-the-art rigid, rigid highly inflatable boats We've got the new French-designed uh, Orc rescue craft. It's a 40-meter rescue craft that can do deep-sea rescue. We've got a whole myriad of other rescue craft, including the old breeds from the, the, the Royal National Lifeboat Institute in the UK um, that we still use in some cases for rescue operations. And it's, I mean, it's really funded. It's a success story in itself. It's an organization funded by the public for the public. We don't charge for rescue operations. We don't charge if we go in and, and rescue somebody or tow their boat to safety if they get into difficulty. Um, it's fun. This is a, an, 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 a, a non-profit organization funded by public and by, by corporate sponsorships. We do get some funding from municipalities, from disaster risk management. Um, it, is, it is a limited um, a, 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 um, a contribution, but anything that we get as funding is a welcomed. Um, understandably, though, it's sometimes misunderstood that it seems that NSRI are, are solely responsible for these operations. One must remember that we often require ambulance services, fire rescue services, disaster risk management, the Air Force, the Navy, water policing and dive services, um, private ambulance services, that all assist us in these primary response operations to water-related rescue operations. So it's not all NSRI. There's a whole network of emergency services that respond to these, and we obviously regard that as their contribution to this government and private ambulance service contribution to these kinds of rescue operations. But certainly NSRI itself is funded by the public, and the public of South Africa can be extremely proud of themselves to have this world-class organization ready to respond 24 hours a day, every day of the year, funded by themselves with volunteers who are giving up their time to respond to emergencies and we on 24-hour operational alert to respond to emergencies. 
a success story of note. And what can the public do in terms of ensuring their own safety to make your lives easier? So you will notice, and the public will obviously have a good laugh at this, but they're often phoned by our market our marketers at our NSI head office in 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 Mulleton. They phoned, and um, we've got a, a way of reaching you uh, through the telephone, and we'll ask you to donate or to become a a um a debit order uh, a funder of the NSI for as little as fifty rand a month. Um, and we've got literally a, a very successful program and very um a happy donors that assists us with our end goal, which is to have this world-class rescue organization ready to respond to public members in difficulty on South African waters. Our motto is to save lives on South African waters. We're also embarking on a massive program of drowning prevention, and that's in cooperation with the likes of Life Saving. NSRI also has lifeguards now. We do protect some beaches during summer where we are... Um, uh, um, uh, directed to be on those beaches during summer with life-saving services. Um, that is also a new thing that NSR has embarked on, together with uh, city council or municipal lifeguards and obviously S South African life saving. Um, but uh, you'll notice that, uh, that the, the, the massive effort of us to raise funds, we've got those uh, Mitsubishis that you can win in a, in a, in a draw. Um, it, we've got various ways that we that we attract people to to be part of the NSRI. We don't just regard you as a financial subscriber to NSRI. We regard you as part of the family. Thank you. Well, that was Greg Lambinon of the National Sea Rescue Institute talking to Biz News about the 24-hour free rescue service for the people, funded by the people. Thank you, Craig. Thank you very much. 